Hi folks, Astronomy Live here with a final video sending off the current SDO eclipse season. So for the last few weeks, SDO has been passing into Earth's shadow, and the Sun has been blocked for a period of time each day. But tonight I will be making a final video making a prediction about tonight's eclipse using orbital data generated right here on Astronomy Live. So on September 8th, I recorded SDO Live and we watched it here, passing into Earth's shadow from my telescope, Invisible Light. So here's a time lapse I put together from those images. You can see the Solar Dynamics Observatory, SDO. It disappears as it vanishes into Earth's shadow. You can see stars streaking by. Those are the streaks you see in the image, and SDO is the dot. So using those images, I was able to create a stitched mosaic of all the images layered together. And you can see a sequence of dots, that is SDO, appearing in each successive image. And then, towards the end, it starts to fade out and goes into Earth's shadow. Again, the streaks are stars, and we can use these stars as reference points to astrometrically solve the image and determine the precise coordinates of SDO over time. So that's what I did. I astrometrically solved the image, and I'll include this link in the video description. You can download the WCS embedded FITS file right here and use this to measure SDO's position over time, as I did. I also uh, published the coordinates that I measured here, the astrometry performed on the image, as well as the orbit calculated from that astrometry. So you can see all the astrometric readings here matching up extremely well with the calculated orbit, with residuals between zero and three, three thousandths of a degree. And then the orbit is displayed here. You can see these two lines in TLE format. This is the orbit of SDO that I calculated from my own data. Now, using that data, you can load this TLE into a variety of programs and take a look at what SDO should see from its perspective in space. And what we saw was that it was indeed the Earth blocking the Sun, and it had been for some time. We even looked back at the September 1st double eclipse and saw that both the Moon and the Earth should have been in front of the Sun uh, during that eclipse that day. But now we're going to take a look at the future. So tonight, just a few hours from now, at about 6.30 Universal Time, September 13th, the Sun will be partially eclipsed by the Earth for the final time this eclipse season. And as you can see, it's just a partial eclipse. Celestia predicts that the Earth will only graze the Sun tonight. It will not fully cover the Sun for just a few minutes of time. And you can look backwards in time, of course, as we've done before. You can look forwards in time. If you go forward to September 14th, you'll find that no eclipse happens on that night. It is the final eclipse of this eclipse season. And again, eclipse seasons occur twice a year, about six months apart, for a period of a few weeks. But some have suggested that mathematically this can't possibly be. This can't possibly be the Earth passing in front of the Sun, that it doesn't work mathematically. All right. Well, I've done the math, and I took the orbit that I calculated for SDO and loaded it into my orbital calculations spreadsheet and used it to calculate the apparent position of the Sun from SDO as well as the apparent position of Earth from SDO, the apparent angular diameter of the Earth from SDO, the apparent angular diameter of the Sun, the apparent angular radius of the Earth, the apparent angular radius of the Sun, etc., and then Finally, the angular separation of the Earth and Sun as seen from SDO. Again, using my orbital elements that I calculated from the observations collected by my telescope. So this does not come from any official NASA data at all. This is not NASA saying that this is going to happen. This is just the math, just the calculations based on that orbit and based on the orbit of the Earth around the Sun, which came from a book that was published decades ago. So this is not based on NASA information. In fact, the orbital information for the Earth even originally came from Simon Newcomb in the 19th century before there was a NASA. So you can change the date and time and it will tell you the approximate apparent positions of the Sun and Earth from SDO and whether or not an eclipse is happening. It'll also tell you whether that eclipse is a Total, total eclipse, whether there's a reach totality and the sun is completely covered or not. In this case, the answer, is an eclipse happening? Is it yes? Has it reached totality? No. So that means it's a partial eclipse that is occurring at this time. 
And you can go forwards and backwards in time with this, and what you find is that there is only a partial eclipse tonight. It does not reach totality. So, yes, an eclipse will happen, but it will be the final eclipse of this season. If you go 24 hours ahead to tomorrow night, it doesn't happen. And again, you can change the time. You can see the Earth and Sun getting closer together and then farther apart. And no eclipse happens at all. Tonight it does, but it's only partial. And if you go to last night, it was total. So this will be a partial eclipse, and it will be the final eclipse of this particular eclipse season. And this has been happening for some time, and my calculations agree with that. This spreadsheet confirms that back on August 20th, An eclipse was happening. And again, the eclipse on August 20th, when all of this started, was partial. It did not reach totality. Now do keep in mind that the orbital information is calculated from a single night's worth of data on uh, September 8th. So it's not going to be quite as precise as the official orbit, but it agrees with the official orbit quite well, particularly now when we're still relatively close to the night that the observation actually occurred. Uh, as of tonight, when I last checked, the position that I calculated for SDO agrees with the official position published by NASA to within about 200 kilometers. And considering its altitude is somewhere on the order of 35,789 kilometers and change, that's not bad. That's a pretty, pretty good figure. So there we go. There's the final eclipse of this particular eclipse season. So if you disagree with me and you think that this is not really the Earth that's covering up the sun, that it's something else and NASA's covering it up, that's fine. But what's the explanation here? How did I come to this conclusion using just my own data? If it really isn't the Earth covering up the sun, then how am I able to make, make such a bold prediction? that it will be a partial eclipse, and that it will be the final eclipse of this eclipse season. And I did that purely from my own observational data on September 8th. Using just that information, I was able to calculate the orbit of SDO and make this prediction for tonight, just a few hours from now. And hey, I have the opportunity to be wrong here. This is a falsif falsifiable test. If tomorrow morning everyone wakes up and they go check, and it was a total eclipse of the sun, that means something's off. That means my prediction was wrong. If tomorrow night another eclipse happens, not just tonight at, uh, at about 2.30 Eastern time thereabouts, but if tomorrow night, 24 hours after that, it happens again, then once again my prediction is wrong. My claim has been falsified. So this is testable, it's scientific, and uh, Here's the math. So I will upload this spreadsheet and put a link in the video description. So I've done the math here, and it predicts that an eclipse will happen one more time tonight. And then it won't happen again for about six months. One more point uh, for those wondering why I haven't appeared on Steve Olson's channel after his public invitation for me to come on there and debate him. Uh, I have been in contact with him via email. Uh, thanks to uh, those commenters who left me his email address in the comments. That is how I was able to get into touch with him. However, I cannot agree to the debate format that he is laying out. So it turns out his invitation comes with certain limitations and rules. And while I'm fine with the rules about uh, civility, no name calling or rudeness, what I can agree to is the debate format because it's not really much of a debate. Basically, there are four points. Uh, not allowed to go outside of those points. That's fine. We can keep it a, a narrowly tailored debate. I'm okay with that. What I'm not okay with is the overall format. I am required to make a first statement about each point. Then he is allowed to make a discussion uh, statement about that point responding to what I'm saying. And then we proceed to the next point. 
So I don't get to respond to what he's saying. He gets to respond to everything I'm saying on each point, and then we, we just have to move on to the next point. I'm not allowed to uh, make any kind of rebuttal or respond to what he's saying. That's a one-way debate right there. That is completely biased, and I honestly think he knows that. Um, I Honestly, I don't think he wants a debate. If he did, then let's have an actual debate, an actual two-way debate. At the end of the debate, I'm allowed to ask him five questions, and then he's allowed to ask me five questions. But I'm probably going to have a lot more than five questions, and I'm probably going to have quite a few statements to make about what he's saying. And I'm not allowed to do that in this format. So I can't agree to that format. If he wants to have an actual two-way debate where we go back and forth um, re responding to what the other person is saying, I'm okay with that. And it's his channel. I'll let him have the last word, but it has to actually be a two-way debate, maybe a time-limited debate instead, just a thought. Um, but I don't even know that he's really okay with his own rules because he demands civility, no name-calling or rudeness, Yet, in one of his latest videos, he refers to me as a complete idiot. So, someone said that uh, Astronomy Live would love to debate this, and I would. And to all of that, he says, I am learning by watching his videos that he is a complete idiot. And a lot of people took issue with that. Not just the people who responded to him directly taking issue with that, but a lot of people also agreed with the people who made those responses. Uh, you know, quite a few people hit the plus button next to these posts, meaning they agreed with it. So basically, the whole thing backfired on him, and as a result, he deleted this thread uh, from the video. As far as I can tell, it's gone. You can't find this comment thread on his video anymore. I didn't even see it at the time. I only got to see it because WTF Sky took a screenshot of it. So thank you, WTF Sky, for going to bat for me, and thank you for taking a screenshot so I could see what he had to say. Um, but I'm still open and willing to debate him if he's willing to actually make it a two-way debate. So I hope that answers all of your questions. Again, I will put uh, the astrometry link in the video description, as well as the calculations spreadsheet as a link in the video description so you can download it and check it out for yourself. Thanks for watching, uh, folks. Clear skies.